whole system, if you think about it, boiled down to one basic, it can be summed up in one basic word. Very simple, and we all know what it is. The word is harm. If there's harm in the action, then that is not conducive to our survival and our well-being. Harm is what we're talking about. And harm, whatever it is, it is material. It is biological. By nature, we recoil from harm. And by nature, we have evolved instincts, as Thomas Jefferson talked about. He said he thought it was instinctive. He even predated Darwin on this by saying the instincts that we got from our earlier ancestors are social, cooperative. So, what most humanists say is that there is an objective basis for making moral decisions, and that is the natural harm in the real world. Look at the harm. Yes, and all actions are consequential. If you're going to take this action or this action, and this results in more harm than this, well then morality, by definition, is pick the path that results in the least amount of harm. You won't find that in a list of commandments. You won't find a list of rules in the Bible or in any Christian system that tells you what to do in any particular situation. It's all relative. It's all situational. If someone's drowning in a river, do I look up a list? Oh, let's see. Rule number 113. What to do when someone's drowning in a river? There, there's no lists. There's no rules. There's no absolute book that tells you what to do. You have to think it through. Someone's drowning in a river. Should I jump in or shouldn't I? Well, if you're like me, you would probably just jump in like that baby. You know, Some of us just you know, naturally would do that. But you have to stop, if you have time, you have to think, well, how far out is the person? How strong is the current? How good of a swimmer am I? Uh, how many children am I responsible for supporting? Maybe the most moral thing to do is not to jump in and to go get help instead. A woman knocks on your front door. She's bruised and she's bleeding. She says, my husband's trying to kill me. So you bring her in, you clean her up. All of us would do that. Uh, you help her out. Later that night, the husband comes banging on the door. Do you know where my wife is? Should you tell him the truth? Should you say, there's an absolute rule that I should never tell a lie, therefore I will tell the truth. I'll show how good and holy I am and how obedient I am to the absolute commandments. Or do you think about the situation? Sometimes telling a lie is the best thing to do. Because telling the truth would put that woman's life in more danger. We all know that. We all know that morality is situational. We all know that it is consequential. We all know that it is relative to the particular situations we are in. So it's a good thing that morality is not absolute or we wouldn't be able to progress. We wouldn't have a society that is free to go beyond the, the brutal morality of books like the Bible and the Quran and other religious traditions. We wouldn't be free to have a secular society where we can truly test out policies that are based on not an absolute basis, but on an objective basis of identifying real harm in the real world and attempting to act in ways that end up with a minimal amount of real harm, less violence, less of a threat to our survival, more love, more cooperation. That is how you know what is right and wrong, not from some absolute religious system. Christian perspective, 
the central commandment, which is love, basically is exactly the reverse of that. It's seeking what is good for the individuals, for society. It's avoiding, it's equivalent to avoiding harm. In what way do you see a conflict? Well, the, uh, the principle isn't to avoid harm, it's to minimize harm. You can't, you can't avoid all harm. Sometimes you have to create harm to, to lessen harm. Sometimes, you know, I think we all agree you should not take a needle and poke it into a baby unless the baby needs a life-saving injection. Then you will cause some harm for a greater. So the, the principle is to minimize harm. It is true that all the world religions, including Christianity, have borrowed from humanism. All of them have. If you look at all the world religions, like Islam has peace and love. Hinduism has peace and love. If you look at, if you look at all these religions, it would be surprising that Christianity did not have something like the Golden Rule because it had been said before. It had been said better than Jesus, by the way. Confucius said it even better in, in, in the, the more appropriate moral form of that which you would not want done unto you, don't do unto others. So it would be surprising if there were not some good teachings in all the religions. But if you notice that when you're judging all these religions, including Christianity, as one of the many world religions, you'll, you'll see that these common things that appear love your neighbor, peace on earth. By the way, Jesus said, don't think that I'm come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So if you think Jesus came to send peace on earth, you just read the Bible. But in any event, uh, those are human values. Those are not religious values. Those, that's not a Christian value. That's a value that Christianity is invoking. So if you separate all the human values that we share in common in all the religions, what you are left with are religious values what day of the week you should worship, how women should dress, what speech you can make, what rituals you should do, things like that. Whether priests and ministers can be married or not. Things, you know, things that, those values are not good values. Those are religious values that divide us. They separate us. They make an in-group versus an out-group. So I acknowledge there's some good teaching in Christianity. I, and uh, there's some things that Jesus said that I think are actually pretty impressive. But there's some horrible things that he also said which are embarrassing which are immoral. So on balance, you might find a garden that has a couple of pretty flowers in it. You might say, oh, that's a beautiful rose. But if the whole garden is overrun with weeds and trash and disease and gopher holes, you say, well, there's some pretty flowers in there, but the garden is ugly. So the Christian system has some pretty flowers, but the Christian system is an ugly garden overall. Can I reply to that? Uh, you can. Okay. Well, uh, that's really surprising. You're the first person I ever meet that thinks that Christianity as a whole system morally is something ugly because actually people, even the people who have not encountered people who don't believe, who are pretty much uh, admire the Christian values. Um, what what I would more? say is, yeah. you know, um, that the opposite is true to what you said. It's not that we derive our values from the secular point of view, which is actually a really, it's a recent thing. All societies in history had a religion. Not necessarily a Christian religion, but societies were religious. So where they get those values is not any secularist, humanist point of view, but a religious point of view. By the way, that's, not, from that's not true. Let me conclude my, my point here. Uh, for example, take the, the all the realm of social action, social justice for the poor. Now states say, well, it's the duty of the state, it's the duty of the government, of the, uh, the people to take care of the weak, of the poor, the, those who are sick. Well, who discovered that? It wasn't states, it wasn't people, it wasn't the humanists. It wasn't the saints did that. They set out to help those sick. They risked their lives to personally care for the wounded, for those who were in hospitals. They created hospitals. They didn't exist before they created them. Uh, they did things for the poor, like the school I went, St. John Baptist of Salle. He became educated, educated the poor. In those times, in France, 17th century, nobody was educated but those who had money. Those very secular societies now claim, you know, this privilege, we are so advanced and so uh, humanist. They didn't educate their children, they didn't feed the poor. Christians did. And now, later on, states political parties took on that as their model, their emblem. But it wasn't always the case. I think that's a, that's a gross mistake, historical mistake in that. No, that's wrong. Um, <laughs> it's not true that every society has had a religion. There are societies with no religion at all. For example, the Pinaha in Brazil, in the Amazon, I think Brazil or, or Venezuela. Uh, they are a society with no God, no beliefs, no afterlife, no religion, none of that. 
uh, no contact. In fact, Catholic missionaries tried to convert them and they failed. Protestant missionaries tried to convert them and one of them did convert him. It was actually the missionary who became an atheist. After he saw these people, these were good people, they're loving people, they cared for the sick, they cared for each other, just naturally. Are you suggesting that before this very recent time of the saints in our, in our, you know, our species history, that there was no caring for the sick, there was no, there was no social ideas of loving and, and, and sharing? Of course, the Native Americans who lived here, did they not care, did they not take, did they not sacrifice? Who are you to say that it's only because of some recent invention from these supposed tablets that came down from Mount Sinai? Uh, historically, that is not true. The, this, this, the saints may have done good things. They did a lot of horrible things, too. The saints who came to this continent with a Bible in one hand and a gun in the other. And look how they treated the natives that were here. So a lot of, uh, some good has been done by Christians, of course. And, and they should be applauded. Christians are just like anyone else. They're not more special. The saints were not more special. In fact, many of the saints were just ascetics. They were trying to prove how long they could go without having sex or thinking about it. You know, they're just trying to, they're trying to prove some weird spiritual thing rather than relating. So yeah, Christians, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, all have a system of helping others, but that's a human thing to do. It's not because